things are beginning to really, really speed up. Well, glad to have you and looking for to you for a high level overview of the big trends you see happening right now, both in the macro uh, global economy, the East West BRICS plus versus West uh, split, as well as within the precious metals industry. So maybe we should start with the big picture of any updates you have uh, affecting the financial world globally. Yeah, well, you know, if, if we talk about certainly if we talk about what's going on with the BRICS, there's a lot going on. I mean, and we've we've talked about ad nauseum the fact that in the first three months of the year, the central banks bought a combined almost 230 tons of gold. That's the most ever seen in in a in a quarter in a first quarter. And you know, the the central banks are continuing to add to their positions. China, uh, seven months in a row, has been buying. India continuing to buy. Their, their gold reserves have risen by over 40% since they started accumulating gold a few years ago. Again, the Bank of Iraq, uh, their reserves in one day, two and a half tons of gold increased their reserves by 2%. Singapore, their gold reserves up 35% in three months. They've been the largest purchaser of gold uh, this year uh, in three months. And so the, the central banks are continuing to massively accumulate gold and silver. There's no question about that. And as it relates to to a bigger picture, we talk about the BRICS. There are 25 countries now that have formally applied to BRICS, according to a new article that just came out. Uh, Afghanistan, Algeria, Argentina, Bahrain, Bangladesh, Belarus, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Kazakhstan, Mexico, Nicaragua, Nigeria, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, Sudan, Syria, United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Tunisia, Turkey, Uruguay, Venezuela, and Zimbabwe. I mean, the numbers are growing. And, you know, we're told that on August 22nd in their South African meeting, their annual meeting, that they are going to discuss or introduce their new currency. This is a report that Jim Rickards talked about where they are actually talking about coming out and introducing what we've been talking about a long time, this commodity-backed currency. What makes all of this even crazier, in the last few weeks, we've talked about Macron and him pushing back against the West, uh, embracing the Chinese, buying liquid natural gas in Yuan, striking a 51-point agreement with China uh, from 5G to military engagement. He, according to the South African president, has requested to be present at the meeting in August. So you have France and Belarus, the two countries, European countries that are now showing interest in joining the BRICS. You have Japan, who has just purchased a whole bunch of Russian oil above the benchmark that the US set of $60 or something like that, and they're purchasing them at around $70. That does not make the West and their their sanctions happy. So things are beginning to really, really speed up as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, when you talk about the significance of these countries, I'd like to just to read something real quick here that, that Jim Rickards brought up, and I found it to be fantastic. He says, you know, he's talking about this new currency that will likely be pegged to gold. We talked about gold being re revalued or, or revalued to a tier one. We talk about all the countries who have repatriated their gold. We talk about the European countries who not only have repatriated their gold, but many of the countries like France have exchanged their gold that doesn't meet LBMA standards. In other words, they have bars that don't meet the purity. It's as if they're all preparing for some event by repatriating, by accumulating, by exchanging out bars that don't meet LBMA standards, it's as if something is coming. And he talks about how this plays right into the hands of the BRICS, because you have, with China and Russia, you have two of the largest gold producers in the world, ranked sixth and seventh, respectively. With Saudi Arabia and Russia alone, he talks about you have two of the three largest oil pro or energy producers in the world. He talks about with Russia, China, and Brazil, and India, all members, you have Four of the seven largest countries in the world measured by land mass, 50% of the world's wheat and rice production, 15% of all the gold reserves. You have, when you talk about India, China, Brazil, you have 
uh, um, four of the nine highest population countries in the world. Not to mention, when you talk about Russia and China, you have two of the three largest nuclear arsenals in the world. And by every measure, population, landmass, energy output, GDP, food output, and nuclear weapons, BRICS is not just another, you know, flimsy, uh, let's just pass it off, it'll never happen. This is a growing real entity. And when you see Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, France, Belarus, rumors of Japan and, and Australia, they're all showing interest and or applying when Macron strikes deals with China, buying ni liquid natural gas in, in Yuan, 51 point agreements, including military engagement and requesting to be at the BRICS summit. It, it's more than just a, a feigning interest. And so I think this is a really, really, really big deal. And if what Jim says is true, and they do indeed issue their new, introduce their new currency uh, pegged to commodities in their August meeting, uh, things are going to be very, 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 very interesting. Um, I think this is something people really need to pay close attention to. We've seen other things too. Recently, Egypt just came out and said that they will pay with the Russian ruble to settle trade with Russia and pay with Chinese yuan for business with China. And so similarly, it, it will do the same thing with India paying for rupees. So they've applied to BRICS. So they're going to trade with India, with China, and with Russia in their currencies until there is a, a common currency. And so you know, when you see all of these things starting to happen, it, to me, is a whole lot more significant and meaningful than than uh, just talking about these countries joining together in an ideological endeavor. This is actually happening, and it's real. And, um, you know, put it all together, it starts to become a little bit, little bit concerning.